Okay. All right, moving on to how. So in other words, what does the operator um, need to do in order to auto scale? Um, in order to get there, I want to talk about three things. So one is uh, using time-based indices. So if you use, for example, Logstash before, you might have noticed that it creates one index per day. Um, we're going to talk about why that's a good idea. Um, next, um, I'm going to argue that for most use cases, rotating by size instead of by time uh, will work better. Um, and the third thing would be um, how would those indices behave when you scale your cluster uh, up and down. Um, so let's start with, with time-based indices. You know, it, they don't have to be daily. You can have like one index per month or one index per hour. Um, but the idea is the same. And the advantages are pretty big. So when it comes to indexing, uh, typically uh, the bottleneck um, is uh, down to the uh, Lucene segment merges, which happen in the background. And if you're indexing in a smaller index, it's going to be much, much faster. So we're basically comparing the time-based indices with just indexing everything in, in one index. When it comes to searches, most of the searches tend to be in the latest data. So we, um, again, if we have it broken down by time, we can hit just a slice of our data, um, and that's going to be faster. But even if we search in um, all the data even, um, because older indices are not written anymore, they're much uh, more easily cacheable by both Elasticsearch and the operating system underneath it. So um, in my experience, both indexing and searches will be orders of magnitude faster with this design compared to having just one index. And finally, when you delete, when you have to expire data, um, with time-based indices, you can simply delete whole indices, which by and large um, implies deleting some files on disk, as opposed to deleting documents from within an index, which are only uh, soft deletes and will trigger additional um, Lucene segment merges. In practice, you would have like multiple series of such time-based indices. Um, um, normally, um, we would break them down by uh, how you'd search them. So for example, if uh, we search Nginx logs uh, separately than syslog uh, in general, we don't have to, like we can always search through everything, then it makes sense to keep them in separate index series. But this design is not perfect, and uh, um, we may run into um, what we call the Black Friday problem. So let's say we are an e-commerce um, uh, website and we're logging access logs. And so hopefully during Black Friday we will have a lot more traffic and so that index will grow larger, but much larger than the indices from the following Saturday or Sunday. And then you have Cyber Monday and then again it's a spike of traffic and then again it goes down and so on and so forth. And the problem is that um, the big indices that will get generated on Friday and, and Monday will um, behave much like that big index that we talked about before. So indexing will be slower, searches will be slower exactly when we need them the most. So to fix this problem, we can rotate indices by size instead of by time. So the, the way this works is, at least typically, uh, we would have a, an alias that will point to an index and Logstash will write to that alias or whatever uh, puts data into Elasticsearch. And then when that index gets to the target size, uh, typically 10 gigabytes per shard is, is like a good rule of thumb in, in our tests, um, we're going to create a new index. We're going to flip um, the alias to the new empty index, and then we can continue writing there. And we just keep on doing that. Um, thankfully, there's some automation in recent versions of both Elasticsearch and OpenSearch. In OpenSearch, this is called index state management, and in um, Elasticsearch, it's called index lifecycle management. And these um, can be used to automate this process of, okay, let's create a new index, let's flip the alias, even let's remove old um, indices, which is gonna be a bit more challenging uh, in this context because you don't have indices strictly divided by time. Um, of course, this design isn't perfect either. Um, 
So for example, if you need to backfill data, right, we're just onboarding some new project that already has a lot, lots of logs, those will all go into the latest index, and that's problematic. Um, and also when we're searching, let's say you're searching the last 24 hours, which indices contain uh, those 24 hours? This is a bit harder to figure out, though Elasticsearch, uh, again, will have this kind of stuff out of the box. So shards that don't have data matching your uh, time frame will quickly kind of dismiss your query saying zero. Okay, so how does this work in the context of auto scaling? So let's start with the simplest, or one of the simplest examples. Uh, let's say we have uh, two Elasticsearch nodes and we have one index uh, with two shards. So we have a spike in load, let's say we want to auto scale. We add a new node, obviously we cannot take advantage of it. Even if we had previous indices before, it's, some shards will migrate, but the third node will not be able to contribute to indexing, which is our main load. Um, so our suggestion is to say, okay, even if we're not at 10 gigabytes per shard or whatever our threshold is, let's force rotate the index um, and like create a new one uh, that will be evenly spread out throughout our cluster, and this way all three nodes can, can contribute to indexing. And this will typically imply three steps. So one, we would change the index template, so normally all your settings and mappings and all that stuff will live in index templates so that when you create a new index, it will inherit everything. So we'll need to change that uh, template to say three shards instead of two. And um, we're gonna do this uh, forcing, force rollover, like create the index and, and, and flip the alias. And finally, we may need to adjust the um, um, life cycle policy. So if, if the life cycle policy said uh, 20 gigabytes before, because we have 10 gigabytes per shard times two shards, now it has to say 30 gigabytes in order to um, keep consistency. And we're gonna do much of the same when we need to scale back down. Um, the only difference would be uh, that we need to make sure that nodes are properly drained before we shut them down, right? So we would exclude them from allocation, and then Elasticsearch would move the shards off of them before uh, we take them down. But once we take them down, uh, we get into a similar problem as before in the sense that the cluster is not balanced, right? So in order to make it balanced again, we can do the same thing. Change the template back to two shards, force rollover, and adjust the, um, um, the policy again. Does that make sense? Cool. 